So hallelujah, everyone who's watching this broadcast and Global Revival Church members, let God's, through God's word in your life, let there be new wisdom and revelation upon you. So when you examine your life with God's word, so a successful life, successful ministry, it's not people's standards, but by the work of the Holy Spirit, you can bear fruit in your life and there will be change in your life. You'll be able to join that. So continuing on from Tuesday, we're going to talk more about it and then we can examine our life. How should we respond? So God's word and his standard, let's apply it to our life. So I bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. So continuing on from Tuesday, so as you're living your life, when you're believing in Jesus, what does it mean to live a successful life? What is success? So man, everyone in the world, when you, you know, ask them, what is a successful life? They all say they want to live a successful life, and they also say, most people talk about their finance. So you have to have finance so that you can do everything you want to do. So some kind of authority, position, education. Or you have to be in a position that you can influence this world or they want something. But um, the Bible never says that's a successful life. Why? Because that doesn't bring you eternal life. Even while giving you eternal life, everything that you need while living in this world, whenever you need it, if you're in a position that you can take what you need to live in this world, then that's a successful life. So in order to do that, there's things that you have to do. Why? Because in this world right now, the result of everything is starting from your past. In what way did you live until now? That's the result of your life right now. It's a result of your past. So the thoughts, the results of your thoughts, the results of the words you speak, can determine your future. So in other words, the thoughts inside of you, unless it changes, your life will also not change. So that's why the Bible tells us something very important. If you go to Romans 11.36, it says, For of him and through him and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever. Amen. So all the start of everything comes from God and through him we're living and at the end everything goes back to him so it's a very important truth and even says amen and it's clearly stated here and then in chapter 12 it says i beseech you therefore because it says for of him and through him and to him i beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of god that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So the first thing, in order for your life to be transformed, you have to give some kind of living sacrifice. You have to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. You have to challenge and act on it. Not just sit there and expect something to happen. In order for your life to be changed and transformed, the first thing you have to decide is something wholly acceptable to God. You focus on that and you present your bodies as a li living sacrifice. That way, your life will change. That way, the promise of the covenant where God is always with you, it's not just exists as a promise, but in your life, it'll become reality. It'll manifest. That he will be established in your life. That he is with you. So in order to do that, so everything around you, the messages around you, especially from this world that are continuously trying to influence you, like the internet or social media, it keeps giving you so many messages or information, whether you realize or not, you become part of that, you become influenced by that, those words, those information. 
So those things wave or shake your life. It influences your life. But do those things speak the truth to you? No. And do those things give you eternal life? No. It might satisfy a certain condition or something you want, but it cannot change your life itself. So the important principle you have to make it so that what's on the outside cannot influence what's inside of you. So the thoughts inside of you be transformed, be renewed to what? To God's word. To God's thoughts, same thoughts as God. In the same way that God wants, you have to keep transforming and renewing your thoughts and mind so that those thoughts, the word of God, if it has dominion over your life, then Jesus Christ will start to rule over your life then Jesus Christ just like he overcame this world you can also change this world that's the person you will be okay so this kind of principle very fiercely since you were born even before you were born even the enemies know, know this so to take the initiative the enemy keeps attacking you fighting against you in the state where you're still not defended when you're still in the womb of your mom in the time where you have to rely on your parents with what kind of thoughts your parents have with what kind of words they said with what kind of environment you are in inside of you there's going to be a lot of attacks towards you so most many people since they're in the womb they already have a lot of wounds that's rejection since they're in the womb they still have a lot of pain and issues it's not according to the truth and word of God but they go in a different way so it's not the godly standard but the worldly standard according to the parents standard so by your word you said I receive I, I am love but you're doing it based on the worldly standard so regarding God it could go against God and it could be that you're ignoring God and you could be neglecting God but there's hope in us and no matter how you were born and what situation you were born in by Jesus Christ everything you know Jesus already did on this earth to change all of that an amazing work for us so no matter when since God created everyone before the foundation of the world he created us in his likeness and image so that we can prosper have dominion over this world and we can influence this world and people will come to us gather to us and ask us for help he can restore us to that position so that is the church and that is the life of those who believe in Jesus Christ so in other words the goal for those who believe in Jesus Christ is for God is always with you so you can live a successful life. God is always with you so you can live a successful life. It's not about what you do or not do, but what kind of work, who does it, is important. So even if it's the same function based on who does it, it could be bring good good influence or bad influence even if it's the same thing so it's not about what you're doing but it's about who you're going to be so in order to hinder that since you were born men the enemies are going to keep attacking you you know even so since you have abortion if you already think about abortion then the, ch the child already feels a lot of life or death issues they're so afraid because they have that thoughts of abortion in them. Or why do you have this child? Why was they born? Why were they born? So all those words and actions can bring rejection inside of you. But regarding that rejection, based on how are you going to respond is the key. So while we are living on this world, there's all these kinds of people who are rejected. There's no one that's perfect. Even Adam and Eve were perfect at the beginning, but in the end, because of their choice, they ended up going against God, so they ended up rejecting each other. So every person in certain mo every moment, based on what you choose, it could choose what you receive or you reject. So what you have to know 
is regarding this how are you going to respond how are you going to interpret the situation and what type of, type of action are you going to take so everyone in the bible they were all born in the state of rejection and in that state of rejection they were chosen and they were all in rejected but they learned how to overcome and the way to overcome is a revelation that God showed them and God said you are this kind of person this is what you will do this is the calling I have for you but that identity they believed in it they trusted in God and so that that life can be fulfilled they accepted God's word and they agreed to it that's why they were able to overcome okay? so what is the key to success God is with you I am with you so in order to succeed you have to meditate God's word day and night and you have to apply it in your life and obey then no matter what you do no matter where you go you're going to become a successful person and you'll always be abundant and prosperous that's what the Bible says that means it's not because you have some kind of right or you have some kind of power or ability no matter what situation you are in when you trust in God then God's word and messages that are given to you you can become something that can overcome and have victory over any kind of situation okay so many people are rejected those who have a lot of family they compare with each other so this ends up comparing and that you feel worse than others you feel more miserable than others or they have more of a some people have more inferiority some people have superiority depends on the situation it's all the roots if you receive the true love the whole love then if you have security in God's love then you don't have to have the superiority complex towards others or you feel worse than others God created everyone wonderfully and fearfully when you have to receive that then you have no reason to compare with others no need to compete with others no need to fight with others no need to have jealousy and envy towards each other it's because you don't accept this truth that's why these things keep happening even in Pastor Kim's life when God changed his life Psalms 139 verse 14 for I am fearfully and wonderfully made as soon as Pastor Kim heard that word the Holy Spirit started to shake him and everything that was wrong inside of him because the parents didn't know all the parents curses because of all these curses they did so the thinking pattern that was in him this house that the enemy has built in him because of this one word it was he was shaken and he had deliverance and God saved him redeemed him he's never gonna forget that incident and until he was 40 he was very shy he couldn't speak very well so at the time he had to share or say something he missed the timing so he always either got abused or he got ignored so he was set free from all of that even he was surprised inside of a person beyond your imagination God's secret is inside of you he realized that he came to know that so what should we do we have to believe what the Bible says when you look at yourself right now it might not be the fact right now but the only way for you to change is as a living sacrifice in order to believe this you put your whole life into that word so that kind of situation and influence even though it keeps coming to you don't agree to it don't allow it if you allow it that means you agree to it as soon as you agree to it that means you're going to get ruled over by those thoughts those influences you're going to become the slave to the one you obey so if you obey God's word you're obeying the truth so Jesus Christ will rule over you and if Jesus Christ is in you then he is the great king he's the creator so he can change everything you can change everything and he even came from dead to life so do you have anything worse than death in your life he can even chase out all of that and from the power of darkness he can change it into life you know that's what Jesus can do if you obey his word when you try to give up something there's times you don't want to give this up as soon as you acknowledge that you might feel like I'm going to be ashamed that lying message is going to come inside you because that is rejection it's fear but if you just acknowledge that and you just give it over to him then he will take over he will take it from you and the freedom that comes inside of you 
besides those who experience, you don't know. Those who have this freedom, everything that you were ashamed of, you can even tell, you can tell those to other people and you won't feel ashamed because of the freedom. And by speaking of those things, there's this Holy Spirit will come, revival will come. Then people ignored you because of that. They looked down on you because of that. But because of that, now you shared all of those things. People are going to say, oh, can I not be like you? And they're going to come to you. So this is how you respond to the rejection inside of you. What does the Bible say in Titus 2, 14? For you are his own special people. In Ephesians 2, verse 10, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. We are his workmanship. And he didn't create us to live miserably, but for us to do good works. So good works is what Jesus Christ did to heal the sick. Those who are oppressed by the demons set them free. You can set everyone free. That is the good work. It's not to give money to others. But in your spiritual life, just like your life has been set free, even others, you can help them be free. That's what you were created for. That's what you were planned for. And in order to live like like that he de determined it already so how can these things happen you just need to agree you agree to his word i was created like that as soon as you agree to that then it'll work it's very easy whether because reality or not is not important you just agree just like joseph he was sold as a slave but he didn't consider himself as a slave. You know, the Bible says he's a successful person. Why? Because he went through the process. You know, God is with him. It was manifesting. He, his position was a slave, but God is with him. Even his master recognized it. He liked it. He enjoyed it. Because it was beneficial to the master too. So he would use you even more. So that is what it means to be successful. It's not some kind of establish some position but it's a process you know god is always with you and no matter what situation that god is with you that thing you manifest that god is with you you might be under someone but you can influence them because god is with you and they're gonna come to you and ask you for advice so that is the ecclesia that is the church it doesn't matter if you're the boss or the um, servant it doesn't matter how high or low your position you might even be called to the president if God is with you that thing starts to God is with you manifest if they're interested wouldn't they look for you they will so being used by God's hand is what pleases God God planted his seed in us he put his glory in us so when you believe in that when you believe in that and that you speak by faith and his power and his name Ma he wants it to manifest through us so do we work to make it manifest no but the world keeps trying to be above others they pretend to be above others they want to show off even though that's not the case but you don't need to do that just you yourself can flow out of you what he already gave to you by faith when you say okay you become a pathway and he will just manifest god is with you so you don't have to work hard your life itself will influence others your life itself will give freedom to others so people will come to you and ask for help so do you have rejection anymore no okay that's the first step the second step so when this happens then the next le level comes there's always people that don't like this around you it's starting from people nearby you they want to take information from you or through you they want to become like that and the things they suggest they don't want to they don't want to do what you suggest they want to go above you they keep on being better than you those people will start to betray you abuse you so in pastor kim's ministry no matter where he went at the beginning they came to him and they they see many things that oh yeah we'll do this we'll do this but their life itself cannot follow so then after a while those who follow and obey and those who pretend to follow he's not he tries to discriminate but then it starts to manifest in their life those who truly want to follow and those who are just pretending to follow so those who are pretending to follow they start to put distance so at the decisive moment in order 
They start to make a false report to those above you. They start to betray you. The betrayal is going to come. From who? From those who are close to you. Okay. Even Jesus Christ was betrayed, right? Those who've been betrayed, you know what that, what that pain is. Especially from those who are close to you, those who are believers. You know, they even promised that they were going to help you. They even made a covenant. But in the small moment, they do something else. And all your position and everything that you have, they try to take it from you. So who's going to take it from you? Who's going to betray you? because they don't live life like that those who life doesn't manifest from the way they live they try to take from you if there's someone who can release life give freedom to others they don't need to take from others they would rather give but it doesn't work out in their life why is it not working out they just have to surrender and obey, but what do they not want to do? They don't want to be a living sacrifice, so they end up trying to take from you instead. You have to die, you have to be humble, but they don't want to. So if you don't do what God, if you don't do what God says to do, then it's going to be delayed. If it doesn't manifest, then those people are going to try to take from you. They're going to take from others and make it seem like they did it, even though someone else. They say that, oh, they're faked. I'm the one who's real. I'm the one who did it. That is betrayal. Okay. But regarding this betrayal, you, you just have to respond well. If you're betrayed, that means you're going the right way. You understand? You're not working together with them. You're not compromising with them. You're not mixing words with them. And you're not agreeing to those people. And you're not mixing good and evil. So that's why they're betraying you. They're trying to take what is yours and make it them, theirs. So you have to have confidence. But when you are betrayed in your heart, the, regarding the pain that comes in, you have to respond in the right way. Because all the wounds and pain, when it comes inside of you, Based on how you deal with that, it could become poison or it could become medicine. Okay? So when you're betrayed and you forgive, or when, you betray, when you're betrayed and you forgive and bless them, God's grace will come. God's blessing will come. Why? Because it's His promise. Okay? He was betrayed too. Jesus was betrayed too. For three and a half years, someone who he helped to raise up, he was betrayed. And before he was, he died, he said he loved them to the end. So John chapter 13, verse 1. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, that he should depart from this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. So Jesus knew he was going to die, and he knows that the one who's going to betray him is there. And he loved his people till the end. Even, even when Judas was like, is it I? You would say, yes, it's you. Leave. But Jesus didn't do that. He said, yes, it is you. I have spoken it. It even says, it would have been good for that man if he had not been born. The Son of Man indeed goes just as is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. He's saying it's so, you know, he feels bad for Judas. It's not easy to have that kind of heart, that kind of compassion. Can you eat food with the one who's going to betray you? If you have hatred, if the hatred comes inside of you, you wouldn't be able to look that person in the eye, right? You would turn your eye. You cannot look at them. It says in First John, if you hate your brother, if you don't love your brother, it's like murder. So that is what betrayal is. You're pretty much stabbing your the other person in the back. But Jesus didn't do that. So this is the thing we have to think about. Jesus focused on the work that God told him to do. He didn't focus on the betrayal and rejection around him. He didn't respond to it. He didn't lose focus. He didn't worry about it. He only looked towards God. So he could maintain peace in his heart. The Holy Spirit he put inside of you, you know, Jesus 
was the only the first person to be born with the spirit inside of you you have to be born again for the holy spirit to come inside of you but jesus was born from the spirit so the holy spirit was already in him when he was born he's the first person so he knows how to maintain it let's go to matthew verse, chapter 26 verse 48 to 50 now his betrayer had given them a sign saying whomever i kiss he is the one seize him immediately he went up to jesus and said greetings rabbi and kissed him but jesus said to him friend why have you come then they came and laid hands on jesus and took him okay even betrayal you know, normally people just betray you and don't come near you again, but Judas, you know, pretended that he still loved him. Judas pretended he still loved Jesus. He came and kissed him too, but he made a secret sign, right, that the one I kiss is the one you should take, the one you will arrest. Even though he's pretending he still loves Jesus, but that is gr really evil. Even though he knew what Judas was doing, he didn't say anything bad about him. He didn't say you, he said friend, he said friend, he still loves him, he said friend, why have you come, do what you're gonna do, he didn't even say don't do it, and to the disciples, he didn't say after tomorrow kill him, he never said that, you understand? So he never took revenge on this betrayal. Even after he resurrected, did he go look for Judas? Did he go look for the chief priest? Did he go look for the elders? No. You, uh, when he was dying, he said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Even in Pastor Kim's life, when he was in Korea, when he was ministering over a big church, there was 12 preachers following him, and among four, about about four of them, they had a lot of ambition. They wanted to go to a higher position. Rather than obey God's word, they wanted to show off and compete and wanted to become over each other. That's what the, those people were like. So, of course, Pastor Kim moves according to the Bible, so he wasn't really interested in those people. <laughs> So after the success of the mission trip in Jeju, he was sick, Pastor Kim was sick, but when he was sick, the money, the money that they brought for his hospital fee, they went to Saipan and Guam. They reported to the main pastor, and they received a recommendation from the main pastor. You know, they, were, they went to Guam. And then they somehow worked together and how to bring the team. They received approval to go with the money that they were supposed to bring for the hospital fee. But the rumor, you know, Pastor Kim, Pastor Kim paid for it with his hospital fee. So he just came out of the hospital by faith and he only took the people that, you know, he truly trusted and aligned with him. So he didn't do anything wrong. He just took the people that he wanted to take. But in the, while he wasn't there, you know, those other people who were upset that Pastor Kim didn't take them, they spread the rumor that Pastor Kim looked down on the elders and all, spread bad rumors. So all the leads, all the department heads, they all caused conflict, stirred them up, and they made them have a, like an assembly meeting. So Pastor Kim came back from Guam and then, you know, something was wrong. So in that assembly meeting, they were going to summon Pastor Kim. So he went, why? He already said, said something was wrong. And the first word they said, did you really look down on all of us? Did you do all this, all the bad rumors? So if he reported to the main pastor, and the main pastor gave him the recommendation, and that he went to the Guam, then the situation would be over. If he already explained what happened, the issue would be easily solved. There would be no problem. But at that time, the main pastor was in a very hard time because the elders were fighting 
they were fighting who would take the position. You know, the main pastor had a lot was old. He was very moved in the Holy Spirit, but he was getting older and so those who were living in the flesh, they tried to take over the church and they were fighting with each other. So the pastor didn't protect him, then he would have an even harder time. So Pastor Kim said, I never did anything wrong. I just reported in the way I'm supposed to. You know, he reported according to the... Apparently, I guess in the church that I was supposed to report to the elders too, but Pastor didn't do that. He didn't grow up in that church, so he didn't know that. So he did his best. But basically, they were just spreading bad rumors about Pastor Kim. Pastor Kim made one mistake. He just heard the word frozen oil. He shared it so that we could pray together. But they ended up using that to spread more rumors. and So, of course, the main pastor would feel bad, like worse about it. So they were saying, oh, Pastor Kim is trying to cause a rebellion in the church, stir up people. So they started to betray him. So Pastor Kim didn't, basically didn't know what was going on and he was pretty much had to leave the church. They said to go greet another church, so he didn't even know why he had to go. So without Pastor Kim knowing, the other pastors were pretty much trading him, the reason, because of all those fake rumors, bad rumors around him. But before they pretty much kicked him out of the church, they said go to the Philippine mission trip. He had to lead the Philippine mission trip. Do you think people are going to follow him? Those people, those people who cause all these incidents and conflict and strife, do you think they're going to follow Pastor Kim? No, Pastor Kim had a lot of hard time. There was no one to help him. But God worked in the Philippines. And Pastor Kim just left the church. Later on, that pastor came to Kailua. Couldn't really apologize, but knew what he did wrong. So he heard everything and came to Pastor Kim's church. And then he did a lecture. And then he, they reconciled. You know, forgiveness and everything. But by that betrayal, in the end, that church was all messed up because everyone was fighting to be in the higher position. He still prays for all those people who spread the bad rumors about him. Yeah, he prays for all those people who pretty much betrayed him and spread bad rumors. Because those who have the pure heart in the kingdom of God, and rather than the pure heart of the kingdom, those who want to become more famous or become a higher position, they're going to have conflict. Pharisees, Sadducees, elders, they're not interested in life or death. They're interested on their name, their fame, and their position. You know, Jesus didn't do any wrong, so they were received grace by his word. But if they acknowledge him, they're going to lose their position. So they tried to find a way to, you know, kill Jesus. But ironically, even Jesus' disciple sold Jesus. But it's already been prophesied in the Bible that he was going to be betrayed by one of his disciples. So what we have to learn, how are you going to forgive these people? You know, even Peter betrayed Jesus, but he saved Peter. He saved Peter. And Peter gave more of his life and he testified Jesus. So regarding all the situation around you, but what kind of perspective do you have and how do you respond? So the heart that he gives us is those who judge you, those who criticize you rather than judge them, bless them. It's not easy. When you try to do that, you're going to remember what they did, right? So you have to deal with those emotions. So those emotions, those feelings, even if that person did got destroyed, if those feelings don't go away from inside of you, then you're going to perish too. So the, the way Jesus taught us, you know, the one who betrayed him, they spit at him, they stoned him. 
But he said they don't know what they're doing, so forgive them. And then he says it is finished. And then he forgave them. He just kept what he was supposed to do. He didn't complain. He didn't blame. That's why his name, that everyone will come before his name, bow before his name, and they will confess that Jesus is Lord. And even more is that his name, he told us to use his name. So that means we can do the same thing that Jesus did. So these things will happen, betrayal, rejection. So those who want to live an honest according to the truth and those who are just pretending and trying to get a higher position, that kind of battle is always going to happen. Even then and now, this kind of conflict is always there. Then who is your choice? How did Jesus deal with this betrayal? So deal, it, deal with it in God's way. And David, uh, when his son betrayed him, he said, don't kill my son. And then when he heard that his son died, he said, Absalom, Absalom. It would have been better if I died on your behalf. Because this happened because of my sin, not you. That's what David said. Because even David, he realized. There was many people who tried to kill David. His father-in-law tried to kill him. But regarding that, he didn't take revenge. Why? Because he knew who God was. He knew how God called him. And from his rejected state, God raised him up and made him a king. He knew what God wanted to fulfill, fulfill through him. He heard and saw so he could live a successful life. What does it say in the Bible? So David fulfilled all of God's will and at the end of his time, he passed away. And David was a man after my own heart. The Bible says it. it didn't, it's not, David made a lot of mistakes. He killed many people, but God's interpretation was different regarding David's life okay? so when you pass through that the third thing after betrayal people are not going to clap for you when you succeed there's going to be people who mock you there's going to be people that persecute you there's going to be people who uh, accuse you even while Jesus was on the cross people were mocking him you save others but he cannot save himself they blindfolded him and said prophesying will hit you they spit on him they did everything they mocked Jesus did Jesus respond to any of that? No. He just kept silent. He didn't respond. Why? Because if you respond, then you're going to be influenced by it. You, he didn't respond to those accusations. That means these accusations are going to come, and even the end of the Beatitudes, you're going to be persecuted, right? Blessed are those who per are persecuted for my name, for the gospel, for the kingdom. You're going to receive even more. And there will be a great reward for you and you won't fall short of the eternal life. There's going to be persecution. The battle is going to be there. The power of darkness and those who are in the light, they're not just going to, the power of darkness is not just going to let you have victory. So Pastor, you have to deal with many accusations, many mockings. He had to go through everything. In the beginning, he couldn't endure it because he was betrayed a lot. He couldn't sleep well. He couldn't eat well. That was his beginning. When he was first betrayed, you probably experienced that. But the more you know God, you learn the power of forgiveness and how to release them. Even Job, he released those people. Those who mocked him, those who looked down on him, God told him to forgive them and release them. So even Job himself, you know, he confessed that he did, he spoke without any knowledge. He only heard before, but now he can see. So the things I said without any knowledge, those things I said without understanding, he repented for all of that. And God gave him the solution. Forgive those people and bless them. Okay. So in your life, don't be influenced by the outside, but no matter what hardship or situation comes, if you have the heart to respond in God's way, then in no matter what situation, no matter where you are, you can succeed. Even Joseph believed in this, what did he say? But as for you, you meant evil against me, you sold me, 
but God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive. So this betrayal and these accusations, persecution, mocking can make your life more of a light. It can make your life more abundant. So after you break through this, all those people who did that to you, they're going to repent and come back and they're going to gather around you and they're going to dedicate their life to the kingdom. There's going to be many people. I believe in that. So the pain, the suffering that you're going through, don't just give up. Don't be dragged around by it. Who are you? And who is God? The, God said, I am with you. When you receive and accept that, then I am who I am. You can create anything. To you, he said, I chose you. I loved you. I love you. And since the beginning of this world, I called you. And I gave you every spiritual blessing. I accepted you. I forgave you. I redeemed you. I gave you wisdom. And I poured out my spirit into you. So that the promise of the covenant, the inheritance, until it is fulfilled in your life, I will guarantee your life. So lift up my name. So as long as you say yes, amen. And thank you, Jesus. Just agree to that then everything else will change. So in the spiritual realm, all the things that are bound will be broken and loosened and it will change to blessing. So all the curses will be broken so that anointing and blessing will come. And the glory continuously throughout everything will always be with you. And His name will always be with you and it will be honored. Even today, He's waiting for us to respond. So at the end days, are you the ones who's going to respond to his calling? You are rejected, you are betrayed, you were looked down on, you were ignored, you were accused. Don't be afraid of that. You can change it all to blessing. And because you have his calling, that's why these things will happen even more. So focus on God. And he said, You are my chosen special people. You are my special jewel. You are my special people. You will manifest amen. my glory. Just say yes and amen. Then God will lead your way, your path. So everyone who's listening to this broadcast, the same blessing work in you. So I bless you guys in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.